Hello everyone. We're going to talk for a little bit today about the basics of differential relaying. Uh, we're going to discuss just what's a differential look for, how it works in terms of how current flows through the current transformer through the relay, um, and what happens if we have a fault condition. Um, I've got already drawn up here. I've got a generator. Uh, I've got a, a generator breaker. I've got a generator step-up transformer or a GSU. And I've got a high side breaker 918. Now, one thing to know, and one thing I'm big on is nomenclature. Um, notice the generator breaker is 218. The 2 is an indication of the voltage level um, being uh, 13 kV. Uh, 918, notice on the high side, 9 is a 161 kV breaker. Um, and it, the 18 also tells us things too. Uh, you can't see it in this particular drawing, but if you saw a picture of, the, of a whole switch yard, the 9 would be a 161 kV. The one would indicate that it's in bay one of the switch yard, and the eight can also um, give indication of what bus it's tied to. Uh, every company is different. Um, every design can be different. The particular company that I work for, an eight would indicate that it was on bus two. If it were on bus one, it would be 914. So looking at 918, and I always teach my students, read it left to right like a sentence. So if I look at 918, then it should read 161 kV, Bay one bus two breaker. Uh, breakers are all are not all. I'm not going to say they're always even numbers. The company that I work for, we always use even numbers for breakers. Disconnects and hand operated switches would be an odd number. So the isolate and disconnect for nine one eight would be um, would be nine one seven, and then nine one uh, nine one nine. So back to the differential relay. Um, we're going to start with a transformer. Okay, and we're going to draw a CT, a current transformer. Okay. Forgot to put my relay in there. So 87, 87 being the device number for a differential. Uh, so anytime you see a circle with a, with a 87 in it, this is a differential relay. Uh, a, a circle being the old electromechanical style, a lot of the newer solid state or combo package relays, you'll see a, a dotted line and it may have four or five relays in it because they're multifunction relays such as Schweitzer, um, uh, Optimo, a lot of the different uh, new solid state relays. Uh, but for simplicity purposes right now, we're just going to use the, the old 87 with a circle in it. So. Now, one thing to understand is uh, we've got a generator, and let's just say we're putting out 100 megawatts on our generator. Now, that may be large, it may be small, depending on what your generation background is. I'm from Hydro, so I'm used to about a 40 megawatt unit. Um, if you're some of the gas-fired plants or coal plants, then you're used to seeing a lot more megawatts on a unit. Um, but we're going to go with 100 here. Okay, and let's say we've got... 2,000 amps flowing. Flowing this direction through our generator breaker. Now one thing to understand is that we're going to use the same amp value here and here only for understanding purposes. Now in reality uh, the amp flow is going to be different here than it is here. If we have 100 megawatts coming out of the generator going through the transformer this side of the transformer is also going to have 100 megawatts. But we know that if we look at basic Ohm's law, which is power equals uh, E times I, voltage times current, uh, the power being the megawatts. Uh, so we know that the voltage is lower here, so we're going to have a higher current value here. On the, the high side, because it's a step-up transformer and the voltage is higher, is going to be a lower amount of amps. The amp value is going to be lower, but we're still going to have 100 megawatts. But I just want you to understand that because when you see me write the same numbers up here, I'm just writing them up there uh, and using the same numbers for understanding purposes. Um, but in actuality, it will be a different number. And the relays are calibrated and the CT ratios account for the, the difference of the values so that we're, we're making sure we're seeing the same thing here and here uh, in terms of making sure we're not losing anything to a fault inside the differential zone. So just, just keep that in mind. So uh, typically your CTs are like a 2,000 to 5 ratio. And that's just uh, 
that's just an industry standard. Um, and there's different ones, but a 2005 means if there was 2,000 amps flowing in the primary, it would give us a five amp put, five amp output in the secondary. Okay, so we're gonna say we've got five amps flowing this way. And the reason I say that is because the current flow in a CT, the current flow in the secondary is opposite the current flow in the primary. And the way that, uh, that I was taught to remember that is that if it hits the long line, it pushes. So if, right here, you see we've got the long line drawn on the CT, 2,000 amps hitting the long line, and it's pushing. And over here, we've got current flow through the transformer. We've got 2,000 amps here. hitting the short line. So because it's hitting the short line, it's pulling this way. So we've got five amps going out this way, five amps being called for here. That means everything is happy and balanced. Now in a transformer differential, they're a little bit different than a bus differential. Transformer differential always has current flow through the relay. The relay has a restraint coil and an operating coil. And as long as everything is happy and balanced, the current flow will only be through the strength hole and will not trip, um, it will not trip the relay. So we've got five amps here. It's calling for five amps here. Everything's happy and balanced. Okay, so now let's put a fault to this and see how it works. Okay, let's say we have a, a piece of bus work goes to ground here. Okay, so we've got 2,000 amps going here, feeding the fault. Our 2,000 amps going this way, let's say we lose 700 amps here. So that leaves us 1,300 amps going here. So 2,000 amps pushing 5 amps here. We've got 1,300 going here. So this is not calling for the full 5 amps. We'll just say it's, say it's calling for 2 amps. So we've got five amps flowing this way, two amps flowing this way, so that leaves three amps not accounted for, okay, because, because we're losing it here. It's seeing the full amount of amp flow here, and it's not seeing the full amount here. So it's, there's a difference uh, in, in the amount of amp flow, so that extra amp flow in the secondary that's unbalanced goes through the operating coil of the differential relay, and that's what closes the contacts. Now this is not all you're going to see. What you'll see is you'll see a dotted line and you'll see an LOR. An LOR stands for a lockout relay. I mean, it could be labeled with a device number 86. It could be a 94. Uh, typically on transformers you'll see a 94. And what this LOR is going to do is you'll have a dotted line. Now the difference between the dotted lines is that the solid lines are, are the actual secondary circuits. The dotted lines typically are going to stand for your DC trip circuits. Okay, so what this LOR is going to do, it's going to go and it's going to trip 218, 918, the two breakers that it takes to clear the fault. So something goes to ground, there's a difference in current. It's calling for two amps here, there's five in the circuit. The difference go, gets pushed through the operating coil of the differential relay. And it trips the LOR and clears the fault by opening up 218 and by opening up 918. And that's the basics of how a differential relay works. It's very, very, uh, uh, very simplistic. There's obviously a lot more detail that goes into it, a lot more engineering and a lot more theory that goes into it. Uh, but for operator purposes, that's the essentials of it. And we'll talk more about it in a later session. Thank you.